I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. I just want to say thank you to Kay Lewis Flinch's family. Um, thank you for the feedback. I want to thank Maxine for her constant, uh, she's constantly looking after me with advice and sending me videos. So that's all great. And my other listeners, Alex. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll call you listeners. Alex Uja, Dion Innerarity, Rachel Speed. Thank you all for your comments and your, you know, your motivational words. Thank you very much. Anyway, today's video is quite disturbing. Oh, another thing. Um, somebody sent me an email um, asking me to talk on the Black Code. They, they sent me stacks and stacks of reading material. To be honest, this is not my full-time job. This is what I do as a hobby. I cannot read reams and reams of paper. If you want me to talk on something, I'm a visual learner. I, you know, I like to listen. I like to watch. I don't like to read. We have different types of learners. We have people who like to read. We have people who like to um, look at videos. We have people who like to listen to the radio or listen to YouTube, whatever. I'm the latter. So if you want me to talk on something, either make it very brief and to the point, or you send me an audio, or you send me a YouTube video to give me, uh, so I can give my opinion on it. Otherwise, I, I cannot read uh, articles and articles and legislation upon legislation. I really don't have the time. So I do apologise, but if you can send it to me in another format, I'm more than happy to discuss the topic. Anyway, going back to the topic of today, um, I'm going to show you a video and I'm going to ask you what you think. Ten policemen are jumping, I think it's a Jamaican guy, on this train. Tell me what you think he's done. <laughs> That was published by RT News. Do you know what he's done? He didn't pay for a ticket. That's what, that is why 10 policemen have jumped him, not paying for a train ticket. Now, I don't know how they knew he didn't pay for a train ticket. I don't know if he jumped the barrier. I don't know what. But when you think about... What was, what are they thinking why they need 10 police officers coming to him with a gun because he hasn't paid for a train ticket? Okay, normally you get a penalty. The, the um, whoever it is, the ticket collector will come on the train. They'll say, okay, you haven't bought your ticket. You need to pay X amount and they, you give them your address and you're on your way. But I have it on good authority that, that that gentleman, who I believe is a Jamaican, didn't have a ticket. And that is why 10 police officers drag him off of the chair, all, all kneeling on him and goodness knows what else. And, you know, I'm wondering to myself, what are they thinking? Are they thinking that because he hasn't bought a ticket, that means he must be guilty of some other kind of criminal activity, something a bit more serious. Does it mean that he's got a gun? Does it mean he's committed grand larceny? Does it mean he's committed fraud? Why would it take so many police officers on one man, an unarmed man? I don't get it. 
And you know what? What is the sad thing about it? Today, Jamaica signed a bilateral agreement with America, who has the same racist police force that treats our men like that. Now, why would you sign a bilateral agreement allowing them, almost giving them permission to treat our people like criminals? Because that is what they're doing. I'm going to tell you about this bilateral, and it's only signed off today by Mr. Chan. Um, anyway, I, I get so I get quite emotional about that because it's too heavy handed. It's extreme. And it just screams out bias. The government has signed a new bilateral security cooperation agreement with the United States that will assist in the fight, a fight against transnational criminal activities. Transnational criminal activities is another word for like organized crime. I don't know what percentage of Jamaicans are involved in organized crime that warrants signing this bilateral agreement. When I put, when I was looking for the searches, I was looking for, okay, organized crime by Jamaicans, transnational criminal activities by Jamaicans. All I can find is something from the UK Home Office. I found something from Canada and I found something for USA. Where's Jamaicans? Where's Jamaicans report on it? What percentage of our Jamaican population are organized, are involved in organized crime or transnational activities that warrants this bilateral agreement? Will somebody please tell me and, and write it in the um, comments? Because I don't know if Jamaica, when they're siding, it's like with the fishermen and having the coast guards and they took those guys off and they was abusing them in their cells. And Jamaica saying, oh, I didn't know the Jamaican government. Oh, I didn't know that they were going to be treated badly and they should have called us. But those people are only allowed one call. And Jamaica is not monitoring what's happening to their civilians. So now they've signed this bilateral agreement, which technically is giving the American authorities to treat our, our men like crap. Hmm. Anyway, transnational crimes can be grouped into three broad categories involving provision of illicit goods, drug trafficking, trafficking in stolen property, weapon trafficking and counterfeiting. Illicit services, commercial sex, and human trafficking. I know that Jamaica has um, is involved in human trafficking. I don't know to what extent that it warrants such a, a big agreement. And I don't know why it has to be a bilateral one with America. Why can't they do it by themselves? They've got enough police force. So why can't they just do it by themselves? You know, I'm all for, you know, cracking down, but why can't, why can't you do it by yourself? This was disclosed by Minister of National Security, Honourable Dr. Horace Chang, at today's 20, October the 29th, today's the 30th. So this was yesterday, sitting of, sitting on the House of Representatives. I'm pleased to announce today that last week, Wednesday, 23rd of October, 2019, we signed with our US partners a new agreement, which we expect to satisfy the legal requirements of our constitution and will provide a strong basis for increased cooperation and opera, operation, operationalizing all arrangements in fighting transnational criminal activities out of Jamaica, the security minister said. Not unless they're talking about people in America and not in Jamaica. Because he's saying criminal activities out of Jamaica, in fighting transnational criminal activities out of Jamaica. So I don't know if it's what's happening outside Jamaica and it's happening in America, why America is involved in this bilateral agreement. I don't know. I couldn't find anything on it. 
Well, I just think, you know, governments have to be so careful what they sign. When you think what happened to the Cameroon and the French, they signed that um, cooperation and compliance agreement in 1957, binding them to the French for almost eternity is over 50 years and no one can change it. So when you're signing all these agreements willy-nilly, you don't know what impact that has on our future generations. They're just signing it and thinking, oh yeah, let's sign it. And you know, they're not being responsible leaders. They're not thinking about their people. Dr. Chan noted that the agreement with the United States was per pursued with the full knowledge of the cabinet. There was no secret arrangement and we so inform the house today. Having come to a conclusion, the, those countries remain our primary long-standing partners in security operations and will remain so under this government, he said. He advised that the new agreement was necessary given the fact that early last year, the Supreme Court found that the existing memorandum of understanding, which allowed for the use of intercepted information in prosecuting members of transnational criminal organizations, was unsatisfactory and inadequate. From what I recall, that memorandum, that we make, if it's the same one that related to the fishing and the coastal guards, that was inadequate because it didn't give um, the Jamaican civilians enough protection. So I don't know if this one is supposed to improve it. I hope so. But, you know, unless you read pages and pages, I just can't. You know, if there are any scholars out there, any scholars out there, if you want to read the Memorandum of Understanding or this new bilateral agreement and you want to summarise it and send it to me, I'd be so grateful. I really can't handle that after a long day at work. Um, in spite of the failure of this agreement, we have in fact continued to work with our partners and in some ways we have strengthened our arrangements and increased our activity in the Caribbean through improved capacity of the Maritime, Air and Cyber Command. Oh, so it is the same bilateral agreement then of the Jamaica Defence Force, the minister said. He said partners which include the United States, Canada and the United Kingdom, ah, oh, that's why I could only see their reports, have been critical long-standing bilateral partners in security operations, but they've got nothing good to say. That's the problem. We need an un unbiased uh, report. Long-standing bilateral partners in security operations in the Caribbean, adding that these security relations are underpinned by several long-standing treaties, protocols and agreements. Well, I just hope they work in favour of our civilians. That's all I've got to say, because in light of that video, it worries me how, you know, the, how the police force feel that they can, it's almost like they feel as though they've got a right to behave like that. What gives them the right? Who gives them permission to behave like that and not have any consequences for it? As long as there's no consequences for it, they're going to conti continue treating our men like crap, using overzealous tactics, extreme, you know, extreme, that's extreme force. A man sitting on a chair, minding his own business on the phone, and you, and you just raid him like that? Anyway, that's all I've got to say. Bye-bye for now.